two defective nightlights. This one was in use in a child's bedroom when it suddenly went buzz, poof and smoke came out. Apparently, note, smelly. Smelly smoke is quite common with the electronic stuff. And this one from a different seller has just never ever worked. So uh, let's uh, check these out and see uh, what's happened. I'm kind of guessing the dropper capacitor in this one has probably let the magic smoke out. It's probably cracked. Ooh. Oh, the LED has actually got a big... Oh, hold on, hold on. Yeah, can we kind of lift this out further or is it absolutely jammed in? There's the screws. There's screws. That would help. I can see the problem from here. What a tiny capacitor. A tiny capacitor that has, quite frankly, shat its pants and squirted smoky stuff all over an LED. Well, look at the tiny uh, discharge resistor in that as well. Here, let's get up close and personal with this so we can see what's happened. Oop. So, uh, look at that tiny little resistor across the capacitor. It seems intact, though. The capacitor itself has a skid mark there, and it's actually left a big trace of soot up the side of the LED, so the capacitor in the dropper is the one that's blown up. These are the typical uh, nightlight that have the incoming supply the capacitor uh, through a bridge rectifier, charges the capacitor up, and then it's a simple resistive bridge uh, with this uh, LDR, light-dependent resistor, that when it's bright enough, it turns on this transistor and shunts the LEDs and just reaches an equilibrium voltage where the, there's enough uh, current still able to flow through the uh, LDR, the light sensor, to the gate, gate or a base of the transistor, depending on what type of transistor it is. Let's see what type of transistor it is. It is a 2N5551. Ooh, nice number. Uh, so that's what's wrong with that one. Let's take a look at the other one and see if it's... Uh, this one does actually seem to be closed better. The other one came apart far too easily. Then I think it had explosive assistance. This may be glued tightly together. I may have to use slight persuasion. One moment, what can I use? I can use the vice of knowledge to give it a quick squeeze and see if we can liberate it that way. That sounds reassuring. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, zoom out a bit here. I'm not going to be subtle here. If I was trying to save it, I might be more subtle, but uh, when these th if these things are glued together, it's very rare that you can actually save them without creating sort of crunchy bits on the side. Is that going to break any open anymore? No, it's not going to break it open anymore. Right, let's uh, see if that's uh, parted enough to get a spudger in somewhere. Mm, not really. I may have to pause and get violent in this. I may have to use the hammer to x-ray it. Right, okay, one moment. I'm just going to go and x-ray this. This feels like it's been persuaded appropriately. So let's, uh, have I got a flat blade screwdriver here that I could just pop in? I don't think I have. I think all the screwdrivers I've got here are crosshead. Okay, let's use this flat blade here to get in and prise it open. Right, what do we have? There's the light sensor, interestingly, with the little... This is surface mount in the back of this, apparently. So there's the dropper capacitor. Let's whip this off. There's the two connections coming onto the circuit board. Let's see if we can see anything obvious here. Nothing really super obvious coming to mind. It looks as though all the... I wonder if the uh, LDR is just uh, turning that transistor on, tiny little transistor on all the time. Okay, let's probe into this. Let's plug this in and probe about and see if I can not blow my meter up again. 
So let's look for a voltage across this capacitor. Actually, let's look for AC coming onto the circuit board first. That would be quite a good option. Keep in mind that the LDR will be turning on at this point in time. So let's uh, stick this to AC and put my slightly singed meter across it. I've got 246 volts, that's pretty good. 246, what am I getting DC voltage out of the other side of that bridge rectifier? Getting 0.7 volts, which actually sounds right, because that would be then trying to turn on that little transistor. So that's uh, the resistor would be clamping down, and in this fairly bright lighting, that sounds right. So uh, I wonder if the LEDs are in the right way around. They are formed in a circle around the outside, so that's the positive going to positive, positive, positive. Positive. Okay, so easiest fix right now to get this lit is theoretically just to remove that transistor. It's a bit rough, but you know, having said that, all it does is short the LEDs anyway. So let's uh, let's do some really reckless repairs here and turn it into a permanently on light and see what happens. Have I actually removed that transistor? I think I've mostly removed that transistor. We'll see if that fixes it. Is it going to light now? Yes, it's lighting. So it was the control circuit was fault end. Although it's now going to light 24-7, uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, let's uh, try and diagnose I'm just going to pause momentarily while I take a closer look at this and we'll see if we can find out what actually went wrong there. So here's the circuit, and no great surprises. Uh, they've got a fairly large resistor on the input, which is acting as the inrush limiter, and it's called a fuzz, presumably for fuse, 330 ohm. And it's got the standard capacitive dropper based on a 220 nanofarad capacitor, which is this red one here, and a 750k resistor, which is the tiny little surface mount resistor across its back. Uh, then it's leading to the bridge rectifier, which is this component here, and then if the light control circuit wasn't there, it would then just feed through this 330 ohm resistor. It looks like it might just be there as a link. And then a 10 megafarad capacitor with the four LEDs. And what I've done is, that because I've cut this transistor out completely, now the current is just flowing down there. A little bit of current will be leaking through the LDR and other resistor, but it's minuscule compared to what's going through the LEDs. And what actually happens here is that uh, when it's bright enough, when it's daylight, this resistor, this light sensitive resistor, lowers in value to the point that this transistor can be turned on. The sensitivity of that will be adjusted by this resistor down here, the 5.1K. And it's possible that there, either the transistor was faulty or the 5.1K resistor was too high a value. If it had been lower, it would have meant that it was much less sensitive to light. But as it is, uh, it was passing enough current through the LDR. It might even have been the wrong type of LDR because they have different set of resistance ranges according to the light intensity. But uh, the light falling on the LDR turns the transistor on, and when the transistor turns on, it basically just shunts the supply. So the voltage across that the LEDs is, goes down so low that the LEDs just can't light anymore. But it's enough to keep the transistor turned on. Which means that technically speaking, if you were... Well, let's uh, see what this uh, shows up as in a power meter. Let's bring in the flickery hoppy tester. and gingerly stuff this into it. What current is it showing? It's not actually registering anything, it's so low. That's quite a good start. 220 nanofarad. I would have actually expected uh, a bit of current there, but I get the feeling that this is possibly the hoppy meter being a bit fussy about extremely low loads. It does that. If the load is too capacitive or it's too low, the hoppy meter will just completely ignore it. Now, am I going to be able to fit this in? Let's plug this other meter into the hoppy meter. And then I'll plug this into the other meter. And we'll see what it says. It says 0.2 watts. It's negligible. 17 milliamps, though. Uh, so let's see... Again, if it was being measured as actual, like, apparent power. Oh, let's, make, let's zoom back out here so you can actually see it. Uh, 17 milliamps, 0 0.017 times, what's the voltage at the moment? It's 
245 equals the apparent power is 4 watts, which is still negligible. It would cost about $4, four pounds, whatever, to run per year, even if they measured the, that. But, uh, if it was uh, actually being metered properly as real power, then it would be negligible. It would not even show up. It wouldn't cost a penny to run effectively because the power's so low, even when it's bridged out. So, um, yeah, I guess it was just maybe a component selection issue that was causing problems there. So, uh, interesting.